Abelian randomization is using people's variation in genetics uh, to uh, approximate uh, an exposure, a dietary exposure, for example. So the um, importance of Mendelian randomization is that it gives us uh, the, the assessment of a dietary exposure that's independent of other dietary exposures. So it, it, it allows us to pinpoint uh, a causal effect to a specific nutrient and not to other factors that are correlated with that nutrient in the diet. A, a nutrient that's uh, important for cancer is vitamin D. Um, and vitamin D uh, we make partly from the sun and we get it also in foods and some people from supplements. So uh, there have been many studies uh, associating vitamin D level with a, a lower risk of various cancers, particularly colorectal cancer. Um, now because people, uh, for example, people who exercise might have higher levels of vitamin D because they're more exposed to the light, uh, to the sun, um, we, we are not sure that the vitamin D itself is protective or it may just be an indicator the person exercises a lot or has a good diet. Uh, now, we can use Mendelian randomization by looking at uh, genetic variants that help determine vitamin D levels. So some people, just for genetic reasons, have higher vitamin D levels than other people. And if we can show that those people are at lower risk for cancer, that would give us more direct evidence that vitamin D is indeed directly related to cancer, and not just because it's a marker of a good diet or people exercising factors like that. Nutrition is ubiquitous um, in what we do and first of all nutrition is very important for cancer research so we have several links that nutrition is associated with cancer but at the same time it's not easy to study nutrition and diet in general because most of the studies we design uh, we ask the participants to report what they have been doing in the near past about their food intakes, which is not easy and obviously it uh, can create um, uh, misreporting, so people may not remember what in general they eat over the last year. We've learned a lot from traditional methods of studying nutrition and cancer. Um, and uh, we know very well dietary patterns that are likely to be protective for cancer or increased risk of cancer if they're bad dietary patterns. Um, but when we get to specific nutrients, uh, there's a lot of controversy and, and a lot of studies uh, have not confirmed what had been initial leads. Like for example, we thought initially that vitamin E might be protective for cancer, but further studies show that it did not. And part of the problem was that uh, when people, for example, have high levels of vitamin E or vitamin C, are people that might have better diets. So it's been really hard to, to tease out the uh, specific uh, benefit of vitamin C or vitamin E uh, at independently of just being a marker of a good diet. So Mendelian randomization gives us potential to more specifically look at the specific components of whether it's vitamin C that's related uh, to the lower risk of cancer. Uh, the traditional methods have many advantages for looking at the overall dietary patterns, but Mendelian randomization gives us another tool to look at more specific factors. We would like to know, um, ideally, what's the effect of, um, I don't know, um, calcium on a certain disease, but after correcting for obesity, because obviously more obese people will likely have more calcium uh, just because they, are, they have a larger energy intake. There are many challenges surrounding MR. So MR has um, great potential, but there are potential pitfalls as well. So several limitations that we should definitely take into consideration. Um, so some of them are methodological, so one of them, for example, uh, the biggest challenge to start is can we find 
genes that are actually associated strongly with the exposure. So can we really find genes that uh, can predict um, how much calcium we have in our blood or how much calcium we intake? This is, uh, this is not easy. Um, so this is, this is the biggest, this is where it all starts from. So if we don't have good genetic instruments or in other words, good genetic variants, um, polymorphisms that are associated with a certain exposure, then MR is not possible. Thank you.